authorities. Joining us now on the line is uh, Mayor Giuliani. Hey, thanks for being with us here on the Howie Carr Show, Mayor. Always a pleasure. How, how are you, Howie? Good to talk to you. I'm very good. I'm feeling uh, I'm feeling a little more chipper than I was a couple of weeks ago. How about you? Me, uh, me too. I'm uh, in Iowa, headed to Ohio, campaigning for for Donald Trump, and I feel a great deal of enthusiasm. I leave Iowa with a poll that has us ahead three percent, so I hope that gets to six. And the reality is, uh, I think. The revelations of the last week, it, it's finally caught up on the Clintons. This has been years of scandal after scandal after scandal. And I think people have finally, you know, you, can, you can't fool all of the people all of the time, Lincoln said. And I think they've gotten to the point where... There you go again, you know, quoting Abe Lincoln, now. like like Hillary Clinton did. <laughs> <laughs> That what I, that's what I was thinking the night she said that, that same quote you yeah, just me used. Too. I do. Yeah. Honest Abe, right? Yeah, this is the last one. We should be, be quoting Honest Abe. She, I don't think she knows how to tell the truth. Well, listen, I, Rudy, before we talk about Donald Trump, i got to get your take on uh, what's going on with this uh, laptop. And as you, you've probably seen the stories on the Internet today. Oh, of uh, course. That, uh, course. that uh, Carlos Danger has checked himself into a uh, sex rehab uh, addiction facility. I hope it's not on, on uh, Coney Island and it's not named the Half Moon Hotel uh, sex addiction facility. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's kind of an old style New York joke. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Abe Rellis jumped out of jumped out of jumped out of the hotel room before he was going to testify against Lucky Luciano. Yeah, the the canary Um, could sing, but he couldn't fly. That's the old joke, right? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I think I I think six hundred and fifty thousand emails on a on a computer. That's a lot of emails, and uh, I have to imagine that Jim Comey only authorized this because he had preliminary data indicating that uh, there's information there from Hillary Clinton's uh, server. From uh, He shared this server with Huma Abedin, so uh, the chances that it has classified information on it are pretty high. And the chances that it has information that implicate the Clintons in a lot of the crimes committed by the Clinton Foundation is probably pretty strong. You know, you know, I, I, I don't think he. I don't think. I don't think Jim, who used to work for me, by the way, I don't think Jim would do this unless he had some pretty strong indications that this is going to come out um, really bad for. Uh, let's call it the Clinton world, Clinton Inc. I don't think it's going to be just one a defendant here. I think there are multiple uh, criminals here. I think you got Huma, and you have this guy Cooper, who smashed up the cell mm-hmm. phones, and you've got uh, Terry McAuliffe sticking uh, one of his guys in as the number two guy in the FBI. You've got uh, Podesta, who's, whose lawyer is in charge of the investigation. Of the Justice Department. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is the lawyer that he said kept him out of jail. I'm trying to figure out what was he going to go to jail for. My, you know, my head was spinning. I'm, I'm, my head spinning reading these stories out of the Wall Street Journal. I mean, it's like you got, uh, you got Kennedy, Kennedy type stuff. Uh, you got, uh, you know, from the old days. You know, with uh, Ellen Romesh, you got Bulger type stuff trying to put people in, like you said in mafia. Boston. It's amazing. Is this mafia? Is it, yeah, this is mafia stuff. This, I mean, uh, this is amazing. Uh, you know, I'm glad he's in charge of the investigation because he kept me out of jail. Yeah, he kept me out of jail. I mean, what, what? what I don't know. I never wrote, wrote an email like that. Somebody kept me out of jail. Even if it was true, you wouldn't write that, <laughs> would you? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> but I, I sure would like to know what, what he was going to go to jail for. Isn't it, isn't it the, you know, the, the other thing here is, and I didn't think about this till we were talking with Joe De Geneva last hour, is it possible that they already have like a smoking gun here and they, they're, they're just they're just sitting on everybody's desk in D.C. and they, they know what's going to happen or they, they don't know how it's going to play out, but they have this uh, actual, uh, you know, a, a smoking gun? Is that possible? It's possible. Uh, although 650,000 emails are hard to go to go through. Uh, if you have some key words and you have some categories and you have some good uh, metadata, you could do it in a couple of days. I mean, for example, you just key in on all of the uh, all of the emails that appear to have originated from Hillary Clinton's server and see how many of those were there. I'm going to give you some key Which words me- here, Mayor. Saudi Arabia, 
guitar. Yeah. Saudi Arabia, Morocco, King of, King of Morocco. <laughs> yeah, uh, Russian, uh, Russian uranium, ha- Haiti uh, gold mines, Haiti, Haiti gold mines with a brother, uh, you know, making a fortune down there. Uh, none, none of the money intended, none of the money uh, going to Haiti intended to help the people helping anybody. Uh, yeah. the, the whole thing with the Clinton Foundation. I mean, there are many things wrong with it, but this whole idea that it does good. It does good by hiring the Clinton people to do the work. In other words, I, I, let's say I uh, donate uh, $20 million to the Clinton Foundation. They do one of these uh, things in Africa. They give my construction company you know, $40 million worth of business. That's essentially what we're talking about here. Yeah. That, that's the kind of scheme that's inv- uh, involved here. Everybody's scratching each other's back. Mm-hmm. This is not about helping poor people. This is about... The Clintons flying around on that airplane. Uh, the Clintons. Also, a lot of this attached to it is real cash, right? Like the uh, like the one point five million dollars from UBS in a speaking fee. Yeah, I mean that's a heck of a speaking fee. But now UBS did get Hillary Clinton to go to Geneva and try to and try to get the IRS to go easy on them in getting identities, and it worked. The IRS was seeking fifty six identities. From the Swiss government, Hillary went over, said this is a bad idea. They only got 4,000 identities. That cost UBS 660000 in donations to the Clinton Foundation, a $30 million loan to the Clinton Foundation, and a $1.5 million speaking fee going directly into Bill's pocket. Yeah, this is, I mean, in this is. New York, a, yeah. in Boston, we call that a bribe. Right. Uh, how about the fact, though, that they're getting like two double shakedowns? You know, you get you got to give money you know, to the it, foundation it, it, and you got to give cash be, to Bill Clinton. I mean, Gotti never thought this, of anything this like would this. Be, this would be this case is what I would call a prosecutor's dream. Yeah, I never had a case and I've tried a lot of cases, m- m- many more as a prosecutor than a defense lawyer. Never had a case with as much evidence of this, as much evidence of intent. I mean, you give me a case when somebody somebody has destroyed thirty three thousand emails. I'm going to convict. Them. People don't destroy emails because they contain innocent information. <laughs> right. It's clear. I, what not about when this? the Congress? Not 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 when the Congress has an investigation and a, and a subpoena. The, the, so, if if Wayne has any of those thirty three thousand, then they have uh, they have dynamite. How about this Morocco I mean, the reality thing? Is, how about this Morocco thing, Mayor Giuliani? I mean, the, you know, they, yeah. they, I mean, I didn't know this, and it's it's gotten kind of buried in the, the torrent of other information, but the, the reason why the king of Morocco wanted to spend $28 million on the, on the Clintons is because he wanted, uh, he wanted the EPA, this wasn't uh, the EPA, this was another government agency, to shut down yes. a phosphate mining company in Florida. Uh, and and, and yep. a, a going American concern, he wanted to shut it down. To to well, help I mean, to this, benefit this his business. Of what they did in the in the in the Congo, uh, they took money from uh, dictators. They took money from people that are uh, u- using uh, child labor laborers, uh, and uh, the American government, you know, turned its back turned its back on it. Same thing with the Ericsson Company. The Ericsson Company gave them a fortune. The Eric, Ericsson Company was relieved of. Uh, sanctions because they were doing business with Iran. They were the only company that was relieved of the sanctions. They happened to be the only company in that group that gave the Clintons 30 or $40 million. It's just a- I mean, I, I, I tell you, Howie, you give me a jury of 12 honest Americans, the deliberations here last about a half hour. But how do you how do you and get a special prosecutor? On every count. How do you get a special prosecutor well, I mean, under these circumstances? You're going to have to elect Donald Trump. If she comes in, it'll be Watergate all over again. Maybe there'll be pressure from Congress eventually to do something about it. We'll have two years of one scandal after another coming out. America being embarrassed by having a probably our most dishonest president ever. This makes this makes this makes Watergate look like a kind of a minor petty ante little crime compared to what she's doing. They've corrupted two government departments, the State Department and the Justice Department. I mean, the Justice Department refusing to give the FBI subpoenas. Uh, McAuliffe's, McAuliffe's uh, a guy put in as number two in the, in, in the FBI. Uh, uh, I mean, it's, it's one, it's one uh, she's meeting on the airplane with President Clinton four days before the interview of uh, Mrs. Clinton. 
the the report is put out three days after the interview, which means the report had to have been written before the interview was why, conducted. Why did Comey you, Comey worked for you? As you've said, I've I've heard you say this over over and over. Why yes. did Comey Why did Comey uh, uh, issue the uh, the original whitewash report right after Independence? Day? I don't know. I cannot. I cannot for the life of me explain it. I mean, I've read that report a number of times, and it leads to the conclusion prosecution. And then he said no reasonable prosecutor would prosecute it. It's just the opposite. A prosecutor would, you know, give his eye teeth to prosecute a case like that. Well, we, we haven't talked much about Donald Trump, but I think you've made the point here. There's only there's only one way to get a, yeah. a clean, Don, uh, a clean Don, sweep Don, here. Don, Go ahead. Uh, yeah, what, what, what he calls drain the swamp. We've we got to drain the swamp in Washington. We need to put in an attorney general that's going to make the Justice Department honest again, a state uh, Secretary of State is going to make the State Department honest again. He'll he will he will the way he builds his buildings he'll get good people. That's that's why he gets it done you know on time and under budget because he gets the very best people to do it. And uh, he's he's been at this now for two years. Uh, he's met with and talked to some of the key people in all of these areas. I think you'll see an enormously talented administration, much more so than you know we've seen in the last couple last couple of years oh, God. because it's, it's very ex, it's very exciting i was part of the reagan revolution i went to washington with ronald reagan it's very exciting to go to washington when you're going there to make reforms if you're just going there to carry on the same old garbage they do all the time it's you're really just doing it because you want to be important but if you're going there to make reforms you feel the sense of patriotism you feel the sense of pride it's a totally totally different thing Mayor Giuliani, thanks for being with us, and we'll talk to you again Thank soon. You. Thank you. Take care. That's Mayor Rudy Giuliani from New York. Very interesting days we live in. I'm Howie Carr. That's right. Howie Carr.